ready to deliver the hot takes. The hottest, the hottest of takes. Let's bring them all. Um, <laughs> what's up, everybody? Uh, Chandler and Sam are back. Uh, we are now. Um, we are we are now coming to you as the state of Tennessee's number one Ole Miss basketball podcast because uh, a few life updates since the last time we did one of those shows, uh, one of these shows. Um, uh, I now live uh, in Northeast Tennessee. Sam lives in Nashville, um, and so uh, we are yeah we are Tennessee's number one Ole Miss basketball <laughs> podcast. Um, Sam, how does it feel to have earned that uh, that distinction? It, it really is amazing. Um, we were number two in the coaches poll for Tennessee Ole Miss pod, uh, podcasts, but we got number one in the AP. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we're waiting on the first uh, Tennessee podcast uh, rank. We're optimistic that we'll be number one in that, too. Well, uh, Lunardi has us as like a two seed in his, in his bracketology already. So um, <laughs> that's, a, that, that's a pretty big deal, the, the podcast bracketology. Um, <laughs> anyway. And we never, like, you know, one one quick here. I'll go ahead and give you a hot take number one. Go for like, it. Like, no one has ever showed anyone Joe Lenardi's credentials. Like, mm-hmm. as a nation, we just accept that Joe Lenardi is like the all knowing authority on seating, and he might be. I've never even questioned like, does he know more about basketball than you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would like he... to see a resume before we make him the end all be all of predictions. I don't, I don't know where he got his bracketology degree from. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, it's it's hard to say, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so that that that's a that's a strong take to start with. Um, yeah. Um, I, yeah. I just want to see, see a resume, some credentials. Yeah. Um. And that's yeah. That's totally fair. Um. Anyway. Uh. That is the first of what I'm sure is going to be many hot takes to come because we're back. Uh. We. Um. We've rebranded a little bit. We are now the Podvillian. <laughs> um, and not welcome to the Tad Pod. That was a decision that I made literally like three seconds before I set this thing up. Um, <laughs> so, so that's that's what we are now. Uh, th- throwing out, um, uh, throwing out a lot of love to the new stadium, and um, yeah, we're chatting Rebel basketball. Um, I think we had, we had kind of hoped that maybe we would get something started a little bit sooner than we did, but you know, life happens, things things go crazy, and uh, all of a sudden, here you are, a couple of weeks into the season, and um, and uh, you've already got some games under your belt, but nothing eventful has happened yet, so it's all good. Um, the exciting thing is that it all gets ramped up on Saturday. So uh, we'll start off real quick. Um, Sam, c- coming into the season, I mean, what like, and I think we're at a point now that we can still kind of, kind of, kind of talk about you know predictions and stuff. Like, what, what do you, what do you expect out of the team this year? It's a great question. You know, um, we talked a little bit about this on the kind of full conference preview, but uh, I think the big thing that we we talked a lot interested to see is the scoring load on this offense. Where does it go? You know, I think like Brian um, last year had to carry so much weight on his shoulders. And I think, you know, um, like we mentioned, you know, he's going to have some actual help hopefully in the paint this year. And um, you're just not going to have to rely on, a guard to go off to be competitive with a good Mm -hmm. team. You know, it's like really when you look at Ole Miss last year, every time we hung with the top tier team or beat them, you had a huge night from someone. You know, Mm -hmm. you had a TD, had a huge game against Kentucky and Auburn the first time, Blake Henson at State. And I think you're in a position this year (laughs) where um, you won't have to have that huge performance from someone to compete with those teams. Hopefully, if we're as well balanced as I think we have potential to be and you know my hope would be that if Blake Henson drops 26 on state this year we win that game <laughs> comfortably you know what I mean yeah. so interesting um to see kind of how you know I think it's just it's a team that's going to be able to hopefully more balanced in terms of where the production is coming from just because you've got big guys finally that can really deliver um hopefully you know I mean there's some question marks there but I do feel confident in saying we'll get more production out of them than the uh, dangerous combo of Bruce Stevens and Dominic Olenicek. God bless them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that'll be that's kind of the big thing I'm kind of looking at, and I think through a few games you've kind of seen that to some degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been really impressed early on with how balanced they've been, and that was kind of 
um, that was definitely one of the things that I was hoping to see um, is how does the load get spread? Because I don't know if you have noticed yet or not, but, um, you know, Terrence Davis is, uh, is uh, playing in the National Basketball Association. And uh, as of the last few weeks, he is playing quite well. Um, <laughs> he currently, uh, at this moment, the Raptors are leading the Magic 89 to 78. And Terrence has 13 points, uh, five rebounds, uh, an assist, and a block in 18 minutes of playing time. Uh, so, Unreal. Look, that is – that's one of those things that is really, really hard to replace. I mean, like, obviously – cannot express how um where that oh sorry whenever whenever you log into espn it like kicks in all this ad noise and it was like I just, all of a sudden my computer started making these noises i didn't know where it's coming from but anyway <laughs> that like super happy for him that's incredible that like it, it's great for him it's great for Ole Miss. it's great for everybody um but it but it's losing a lot and you you look at how good davis and Ty, i mean uh, how good uh tyree and Schuler were last year and you hope you hope you can find that to uh, to replace it with Davis, but but you have to understand that you are replacing a lot, and it's going to take a little while. I think it's going to take a little while with um, with these guys this year to kind of get that sorted out. And so, what I've kind of been looking for is I've been looking to see who is Luis Rodriguez. Uh, I've made my my name in the uh, in the chat tonight. Um, lose Twitter handle because I've been very, very impressed with him so far. Um, <laughs> and then, and then also, I mean, look again, you know what you're getting from bookie, you know what you're getting from uh, Brian. And so, you know, who is Hadim C who is Sammy Hunter? Uh, because those guys pretty much regardless of what happens, they're going to play a lot. How have, uh, how has, how has KJ uh, uh, improved? Has he changed his game, changed his body, all that kind of stuff that, you know, it's cliche, but but how how is that working out? And we're already seeing that. And uh, spoiler alert, it's working out quite well. Um, <laughs> but a uh, uh, whole lot of Draymond stat lines with that guy tonight, but uh, or this year. But and then uh, you know how, how's Blake going to come back from his um, from his injury? But beyond beyond all that, because th- those are the guys that are going to play no matter what. Like it's going to be Luis, it's going to be Brian, it's going to be Devonte, it's going to be Dream, it's going to be Hunter. Uh, and then Buffett and Henson, like it's going to be those seven guys, like regardless. But you've got to be able to go deeper. Um, it looks like Austin uh, Austin Crowley is kind of working into that a little bit. It looks like I didn't really I didn't really expect to see this happen. It looks like Dude Column is kind of um, getting some good minutes early, and then uh, and then mm-hmm. Sam Williams um, is kind of uh, no Bryce Williams. Sam Williams plays football. He's like the one exciting thing about. Well, I'm not going to talk crap about football because it is exciting. I just still hate Matt Luke. Um, but, um, but, uh, um, uh, Br- Bryce Williams is, is playing. So, so you kind of look at some of these other guys and, and, and it was interesting, uh, against the game uh, after the game last night against Seattle, um, Kermit came in just furious in the press conference after the game and, uh, basically said, Hey, a lot of these guys who aren't getting a lot of playing time, um, they proved to me tonight why they're not getting a lot of playing time. You know, Seattle closed the game on a fifteen to two run uh, with you know with the, with the reserves in, and that's not that's not what you want. Uh, that's not a good thing at all. So, how, how does that balance kind of end up uh, filling out? And then obviously uh, we get we get Blake back, and I would expect that he's going to be fairly limited. Um, I would expect he's going to be fairly limited in. Uh, in this first game, but I think any presence he has is going to help. Um, but uh, going forward, how does that, how does the rotation and the roster kind of fill itself out? Because that's what, um, that's what gets really, really interesting because you've got some guys who like Hunter and C who it's like, okay, they're, they're doing a lot of really good things. You just kind of need a couple of those shots to fall. You've got guys like, Crowley, who just feels like he is on the verge of just a huge, like like a twenty six point game that Blake had last year, and then you've got guys like Carlos Curry and and Franco Miller that you're like, you know, I I, I thought we would get a little bit more out of them, um, you know, early. So it, it, it gets to be it gets to be really interesting to try to figure out how how all this is going to piece together. But you, we have a really deep team. We've got a we've got a really I think talented team that's still got some growing to do. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I think you're spot on. Um, and I'm with you. I, that's kind of my number one question mark right now is like, what is Blake Henson's role going to be like? Because mm-hmm. it's hard to know how active he's been the last. And, you know, I mean, I think you kind of hope like hoped, I guess, that he would have a KJ Buffin esque level of improvement from year one to one to mm-hmm. year to year one to two. But I, again, it's kind of, you kind of doubt that just based on he's been held out of contact and not uh, being in practice as much. So I'll be very interested to see what his role is. And it is a shame not to have him obviously much more important that we look after his health, but yeah. you hate not having him in this early time where you're figuring out your lineups and who gels well. Um, but at the same time, I, you know, I was watching the game the other day and, and, uh, I was thinking like it's nice to be steamrolling teams even <laughs> if they're bad without a, a, a key part of your team. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, so um, and, and, it, and it's, that's and, and and the great thing about it is it's given it's given um, it's given an opportunity for guys like Luis for guys like uh, Crowley to um, to do some stuff that if that if Blake were getting his his you know what I expect to be you know thirty two to thirty five minutes a night those guys wouldn't be getting. Um, and so, mm-hmm. and so, you know, now that, you know, Luis, Luis can come off the bench and do all kind of stuff for you. Uh, you know, Crowley can come in and, and guard the crap out of people and then hit some big shots. So I think in a way, John McBride can come in. Yeah. Yeah. John, yeah. John McBride <laughs> uh, comes out and gets a big defensive stop for you. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden things are rolling. Um, so, you know, it, it, it could, I mean, it could, especially, especially since, I mean, as far as I know, he's been cleared and he is – he's healthy. He, and Kermit said he's going to play on Saturday against Memphis. So, um, it it sounds like uh, – it sounds like that could have been a blessing in disguise because it because it forced some guys to step up when they might not have had that, that opportunity. And, and the other thing that Blake brings – and several of the players have said this in interviews and in uh, conversations and things like that, that several people have said this, that, that Blake's energy has been what's the hardest thing to replace – and so, and, and, and like he can be there and, and, and I love seeing him active on the bench and excited and all that kind of stuff, but there's only so much that you can do from the bench. Whereas you, you really need to be on, on the court playing, you know, cause you can yell at people, but when you're out there diving after balls and everybody kind of sees that and gets pumped, that that's a different, that's a different beast. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and so I, yeah, I think it's, I think it's potentially a good thing. Um, but, but how, but how do things kind of shake out? Um, as as the the season progresses with him being healthy and back in the lineup, mm-hmm. yeah, I completely agree too. You can't having you know those uber competitive personalities that you know. I mean, college students are are too, and and they go through the emotions of life, and and like you see players come out flat sometimes, and you see you know guys like have a rough stretch and they don't get up for a game or whatever, and it's nice having those guys like Blake Henson that just don't have mm-hmm. that bone in there. Terrence Davis was that way. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously Marshall Henderson's a great example of that, but, um, and uh, for the record, I think that's one of the reasons Terrence is doing well in the NBA. You know, mm-hmm. you know, some players can hit cruise control a little bit during the season and TD, I just don't think has any gear other than full blast, you know? So, uh, Henson's that way too. And it'll be a good asset to have, um, just again, that hyper, competitive spirit is a is a solid thing and you love having guys like that yeah and 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 td again td continues to be a great example because td in toronto right now uh kyle Lowry's hurt so td's got an opportunity Mm -hmm. and he's making the most of it and um that's i think that's that's potentially what Luis and 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 austin have done in these first four games even Mm -hmm. against subpar opponents they have they've played hard they've done what they need to do and like, you know, Crowley a little bit, you know, Crowley kind of bring, keep bringing him along slowly, but it's hard to deny either one of those guys minutes after the way they've started the season, especially, and this is what I want to lead into the next, the next direction we take it with is especially on the de- on the defensive end, mm. because there have been, there've been a lot of years with Ole Miss teams that you, you win some of these games. I mean, you win all these games, but they kind of hang around a little longer than they should, or uh, they make a play here or there that makes it kind of uncomfortable in that last 10 minutes or whatever. But the way that we've played defense so far has kept that from happening completely. Mm-hmm. Like 
they they guard, they rotate. Mm -hmm. They've left some desire, some to be desired on the rebounding, but just so many things, um, so many things have happened and have and have have been a result of just incredible defense, and mm -hmm. that's gonna um, that's gonna be huge, uh, especially mm -hmm. at, especially as you've got you've got you're gonna have four veterans running that defense, and then um, you know my thought is that you know Hadim is, is kind of the fifth guy there, and you know, when you've got a guy like him who's 6'10", 6'11", and can guard, you know, two through five, it's like, okay, I mean, like, you know, mm -hmm. okay, like, okay, good luck, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so what, like, what have what have you seen? I don't know, what have, like, you've been to a couple of games, so, like, what have you mm -hmm. seen kind of defensively? You know, it's funny. I, I was, uh, one game, I was a little bit closer to the baseline, and it was an interesting seeing the view from uh, kind of looking – toward our defense from an angle uh all the guys were, were in their stance you know arms stretched out and one thing that really struck me and you saw the kind of building of this but i mean we have a freaking long team you know kj buffin babes i oh, sorry i didn't even see <laughs> uh and, wow that was bad anyway uh you know sammy hunter even lou rod and like crowley i mean these dudes we're in their stance, arms out. And it was like they covered the entire court mm -hmm. looking at it from that angle. You know, so again, you saw kind of the beginning of that with Buffin and Henson coming on last year and starting to get some real length. But Kermit's recruited a few more guys from that role in that, you know, kind of size and uh, with that length. And again, man, I mean, there's just not a lot of places for teams to pass the ball. Mm -hmm. um, the shots people are taking are what tested and high percentage looks and like I said they're rotating really well um so it's uh, yeah I mean it's just it doesn't look like an Ole Miss team we've seen yeah in a long time as long as I've been keeping track you know um mm -hmm. and it's different you know like um we might have some things that we do differently but gosh very long huge I mean the signing class the shortest guy was six three it was everybody was six 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 mm -hmm. seven six eight so uh Again, it's just it's it's pretty awesome to have that size and just um, I like we won't win every game, but I don't think we'll lose on like a well we were just overmatched kind of way. Yeah, um, yeah, I th I think I think that hits hits the nail on the head just perfectly. That the biggest improvement has has been the length. I mean, like like they just that you have a bunch of guys, and, and I mean again. Last year's team, last year's team is going to go down as one of my favorites of all time because no doubt. what they did was so improbable, and they worked together so well. And you know, you had these guys like um, you know outside of outside of the big three guards. When you had you had you know Henson and Buffin as freshmen, you had uh, you had DC Davis who had to play and had to give you minutes and and did and did it and did a good job. But but DC Davis at Five ten uh, <laughs> can't can't mess with passing lanes the way that Austin Crowley at six four the way that Luis Rodriguez at six six the way mm -hmm. that Sammy Hunter at six ten the way that these guys could do mm -hmm. and 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 you could and you could end up having realistically you could end up having any one of the guys on the court guarding any one of the positions in in that in that press and so it ends up being. Um, it just kind of, I mean, just, just crazy to see what the, what the potential mm -hmm. could be there. And so that's what, to me, I think is the most exciting because the offense has been a little bit, offensively been a little bit frustrating. You know, um, Brian has kind of taken some time to figure out um, what he's doing. And, and, I, and I think a lot of that too is he's just playing the role he needs to play right now that mm -hmm. if, had we played a game where it was like, Hey, Brian, we need you to go get 25. He'd be getting twenty. He'd be getting twenty five. No doubt. You know, like if 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 the coaches are kind of pulling his reins a little bit to see what the other guys can do, like that wouldn't that wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Um. I mean that that might not be it. I mean he might just be kind of stumbling around, but nobody seems too concerned about it. You know. So yeah. Um. Um. Yeah. So. I, I just completely lost my turn. Yeah, they, they're they're going to start hitting shots. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Sammy Hunter has gotten a good bit of um, 
has gotten has gotten quite a few open looks, especially even at the three point line. Um, has gotten some open looks that just haven't fallen yet. Those mm-hmm. are going to fall. Um, mm-hmm. You know, guys are going to start shooting better. They're going to get in the rhythm. They're, you know, things are going to again. So much of that is chemistry, but the way the way that we guard is going to keep us in games early. And then as we're going into what's going to be the most important, maybe four game stretch of the season with um, with Memphis, and then the the three games we potentially play, or the the two games that we'll play in. Um, Brooklyn and then and then Butler, kind of all those, you know, back to back to back to back. I, I, unless I've gotten the schedule mm-hmm. wrong, but I think that, I think that's how it plays out. Um, you know, if you go and you guard the way you've been guarding, you know, you can win two of those games, and and then you're and then you're set. You know, you're in really yeah. good shape. So, I think that's going to be that's going to be the key is, mm-hmm. um, is is how we continue to play defense, and um, you know, certainly on uh, on TV, which is pretty much the only thing I've been able to. I've been able to see on that is that the the defense has been really good and the people that I've listened to and have read have all kind of said the same thing that uh, defensively this is a really good team and uh, as chemistry continues to develop the offense is gonna is gonna fall in place. Mm-hmm. It does seem like this is the first year where Kermit is really able to play the kind of basketball he mm-hmm. really actually wants to play. Last year was an interesting sort of in between of Andy Kennedy's run and gun style and Kerbett's super methodical play, super strong defense, take good shots. um, Don't have to score 80 to win sort of thing. And so I think like last year you kind of had to, again, you were guard heavy. Yeah. That way a little bit, Um, but you kind of got a glimpse of it. I think it was maybe the Auburn game on the road where we Mm -hmm. super slow, game like half court offense stifling defense it was like 55 to 52 or something when we won and like I think you're starting to see Kermit kind of transition into from the little bit I remember watching MTSU kind of the way they played um Mm -hmm. obviously worked well for them they got to the tournament a ton for the school a school their size and um yeah like I said it just seems like now he has the athletes he wants um and and enough to play his his brand of basketball for real. And yeah. uh, again, you're kind of seeing that play out. I mean, we're winning convincingly, but we're, we're really it's the defense that's creating yeah. such a lot. Yeah, and, and, and that, I mean, that, um, look, I, I will forever extol the praises of Andy Kennedy. I will never speak ill of him. <laughs> no doubt. Um, but that was, always, that was always the frustrating thing about his teams is that they just didn't ever seem to really guard – as consistently as they needed to. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of get the sense that's not fixing to be a problem with Kermit and, 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 and that he's got this year, he's got a team that, it, you know, say for example, C comes out and takes a few plays off. Okay. He'll get Curry in there, you know, say, yeah. uh, you know, um, you know, Buffett or Henson or, or, or whoever is not, is not doing what he wants them to do. Then, He's got the depth on the bench now to go and to put people in, and, and that's only that's only going to improve in the next couple of years. Um, mm-hmm. that, you know that that's only going to get a little bit better and a little bit better. So, yeah, um, that's a great that's a great place to be in uh, because you know last year last year he just couldn't do that, uh, and and I think that I think that he didn't even get to to coach with the same intensity that he normally does just because he couldn't because you like mm-hmm. again when you only have you know, seven and a half players or however many players we had last year that mm-hmm. could realistically contribute. You can't just go as hard on people as you want to all the time. Like you've got to, you got to understand, you know, you got to understand that they're limited and that they, they've got just certain things they can and can't do. Um, but this year, I think that still is the case a little bit, but not nearly as much. Mm-hmm. And so, and so he'll be able to, he'll be able to ride them harder. He'll be able to um, push more buttons and, and try more things. And I think that's, I think that's really, really exciting. Yeah, the depth on this team is absurd, man. I mean, like, yep. when was the last time you feel like you've seen an Ole Miss team with this deep of a rotation? I mean, it, it's been a long time. I, I maybe, I, like, I don't know, maybe those teams in the, what, late 90s, early 2000s, we made the Sweet 16 run, and it just seemed like there were just dudes everywhere, and they yeah. just they just went hard all the time. Um, and, uh, and, 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 that, and, yeah. the, and those teams also had – those teams also had – that kind of defensive swagger that 
Mm-hmm. I think once once our guys start to develop again, that the swag that goes with it. Like I still remember, mm-hmm. I still remember watching um, um, Jason Harrison, who's like I think it was Jason Harrison. He's like you know five seven or whatever, just tiny tiny guy. Um, you know, slapping the court and getting in a Notre Dame player's face saying, you know, this is our you know, bleeding house, you know, and it was like, it's like, you know, you're starting, you're starting to get, I think you're starting to get that mentality that it's like, you guys are not going to score on us. You're just not like, you might beat us, but you're not fixing the score on us. And mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. Like that's pretty yeah. fun. And, 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 and then I think again, just with the athleticism that we have, as we already talked about, is that that defense is going to consistently lead to offense? It's going to consistently lead to uh, getting breaks, or even when you got to slow it, you got to slow it down a little bit. It's going to lead everybody to working hard to get a good shot, and uh, and the ball. You know, Kermit always says the ball finds the best shooters, and that's um, that's exciting. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when you've got a Brian Tyree and a Devontae Shuler, and then a Blake Henson, and what now appears to be a KJ Buffett. I mean, you've got guys that can. Um, I wouldn't call any of those guys like shooters necessarily, but you've mm-hmm. got guys who can shoot. You've got guys who can score. And I'll, I would say all those guys too can create their own shot. So yeah. you've got just really, really good, um, good options everywhere. And that, that becomes really fun. Yeah. And man, I cannot say enough about how much I love Kenyon Joseph Buffin. Um, the expansion of his game, has been insane. I, I want to say we did a end of the year recap last year. And I think one thing we talked about was like, if Buffin can develop some sort of outside shot and bulk up, he'll be dangerous. And like, that is literally exactly what has happened. And yeah. Let, let the record show that, that this has been uh, Kenyon Joseph Buffin's number one fan club for a, a year <laughs> now that we have Quite been. A while. We have been uh, we've been tooting this horn for quite some time, and um, and now, um, yeah, now it's just yeah. awesome. It's great. I mean, and, and it's like it's like you said. He he's completely completely transformed himself. He um, he looks better. He's playing more confidently. He knows what to do. Um, I, I mean, it, it just he is a joy to watch, and he like he's going to be the guy who. You know he'll he'll go out he'll go out some nights and he'll get you twenty, but he's going to be the guy that you look up and he's going to have like nine points, eight rebounds, uh, four assists, mm-hmm. three steals, and five blocks. Yeah, and, and it's just like he's he's not he's not going to be blowing up at any one stat, but you're mm-hmm. going to look at him and be like, wow, he was all over the place, and uh, that's what uh, that's what we in the business call the Draymond one. <laughs> um, because, because yeah, that's just kind of what, that's just kind of what guys like that do. They just go and they like, they see loose balls. They, uh, mm-hmm. they get trash baskets. They, you know, they just do one thing after another, after another, after another. And you, you can't seem to really do anything to slow it down. And on top of that, if he has developed confidence in that three point shot, mm-hmm. I don't know what you, I don't know what you do with that. Yeah. I mean, I you know, that, like you just – I guess at that point you just hope that you're bigger and more athletic than he is. And he'll play guys like that. That's that's how it's going to go. Like, um, But, I mean, if, if, he, if his game develops the way that it is developing right now, um, I, I mean, I, he's an NBA player. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I mean, in, in, in just the way that he does every little thing so effectively, like, that's just that's crazy to think about because because he was, I mean he was committed he was co- uh, committed to Kermit signed with Kermit at, at Middle Tennessee that he was going to be a Middle Tennessee State basketball player he had wow. missed all these major offers and, and all this kind of stuff and I think I think he even reclassified so he was playing it's the thing last year, he was playing last year at seventeen years old, um, <laughs> and 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 I mean yeah yeah so. Dude, you, the Draymond Green comparison is not one I had thought of, but that is such a great comparison. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, K- he's all over the floor. And I think, like, I've always thought KJ clearly had probably one of the highest, like, basketball IQs on the mm-hmm. team even last year. Um, you know, I think he's right up there with maybe Devontae Shuler in terms mm-hmm. of just knowing where to be, 
doing things that may not show up in the box score that make a huge difference. And it's like, you know, he, he was doing those sort of things last year, but again, he just has the size and the development of his game and the experience to really finish some of those plays and to take his game to another level. And it's been really fun to watch. There was a series actually last night at the game where um, he, I mean, he was just all over the place, man, scoring, rebounding, but there was one particular defensive series where, Somehow they got consecutive offensive rebounds. So basically in the span of 15 seconds, three different Seattle players shot the ball around the rim, you know, or within 10 feet of the rim. And I'm not kidding. Every single time the first guy there between them and the basket to contest the next shot was KJ Buffin. I mean, he's Mm -hmm. just got incredible instincts and is such a, such an impact on, on defense. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, like I said, I mean, it's just, Everything you could have hoped would have happened with him between year one and year two has happened. And it's it's exciting. And I'm with you. It it would be so fun if he were another rebel to go next level because he's I, I'm just I'm I'm all in on the dude. We're like the uh we're like indie music fans that find a band before they're famous. <laughs> we're the basketball equivalent of that. We're like yeah. we, we love KJ Muffin early on. Well, and, yeah, and 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 there were other guys last year that we could have uh, that we could have been bigger fans of, and all this kind of <laughs> stuff, and um, you know, uh, all, all that all that kind of stuff is like no, no, like like this is our guy, <laughs> you know, um, he's our guy. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's yeah, he's he's uh he's going to be an exciting player to watch, and I think and I think that once once Blake gets back and Blake gets back in the starting lineup, then you know, I, I mean, obviously. Obviously, um, you know, Brian, Brian and, and Schuler are going to be your one and your two. But then, like, what happens from three to five is completely interchangeable. That mm-hmm. you could you could put you could put Buffin out there at center if you wanted to play small and play fast. You could do that because I, I think he I think now he's big enough to guard those guys. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Blake. Blake could be a two or three or a four, um, mm-hmm. and and so and so. What ends up happening is it, 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 it's 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 super it's super versatile it's super athletic it's super long and um and then and then you're gonna have two two really high energy um, high motor guys in um in Buffin and Henson that are out there just kind of going crazy and mm-hmm. and then and then you also have my man Devonte Schuler out here just quietly dropping twenty on people like it's no big deal <laughs> yeah um, I love that dude. I'm, you know, talking about talking about guys with NBA prospects. I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure that that Devontae doesn't play himself into um, maybe a similar situation that Terrence found himself in. Um, um, just because he does have that, he does have that unbelievable level of athleticism. He does have, uh, I mean, his speed is phenomenal. Like when he just decides to turn it on, he just goes mm-hmm. and. Yeah, I, th- I mean, yeah, he's 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 a quiet he's a quieter guy, but man, um, he's uh, he's awesome. And I, I don't I don't know why I said and right there. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> the uh, I have watched the Schuler dunk at Missouri last year more mm-hmm. times than I would ever care to admit. Uh, also, the TD dunk from that game. But yeah, Schuler's mm-hmm. unreal and an incredible defender. I mean, such a good on ball defender. Uh, you saw Kermit, I think, said earlier this week he wouldn't trade Schuler for a single other point guard in the country. Mm-hmm. You know, it's crazy, man. Here's a question for you. Uh, Go ahead. SEC play, do you think Henson's in the starting lineup at that point? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. You think so? Yeah. yeah. I think, I think, I think the starting lineup at that point is, um, Schuler, Schuler Tyree, uh, Henson. And uh, Henson at the three, Buffin at the four, and then uh, and then C, um, C uh, center. That makes me really happy. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, like I don't think that I don't think that Sammy Hunter or Luis Rodriguez have done anything to warrant losing playing time necessarily. Um, but but I think that Henson is just that good, and that and that is that is his role. Um, mm-hmm that is his role on the team anyway. So, uh, but you know, they'll, like they'll, they'll still be guys getting, you know, 20 to 25 minutes, even if they're not starters. So I, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not worried about all that kind of stuff, but totally. Um, 
but yeah, so yeah, I think he'll definitely be. I think he'll definitely be in the starting lineup by then. I, th- I mean, I think he'll be. I think he'll be in the starting lineup by the end of next week if his if he gets reacclimated to the game. Um, yeah, which, which you know, again, Bl- Blake Henson. I don't know if you know this or not, but Blake Henson is not built like normal people. Um, <laughs> you know, he's six seven, two hundred and twenty five pounds, and <laughs> is just completely cut up and can jump over the backboard if he wants to. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so he yeah he's gonna be he's gonna be fine. I'm um, excited to see what what year two Blake. Is. Like, I'm, I'm yeah. very very intrigued. Yeah, um, it'll be very interesting. Yeah, so um, I guess uh, I guess kind of uh, moving towards wrapping some stuff up. Um, like we said, you've got a big um, a big four game stretch coming up, and um, you're gonna get. Uh, you get, for sure you get Memphis, uh, Memphis um, Penn State on Wednesday, and then there'll be a winner of some other game. Um, which I think it's either going to be Syracuse or Oklahoma State, which um, you know not exactly slouches. And then uh-huh. on the third, um, Butler comes to Oxford, um, and so th- those are that's going to be a pretty key uh, four game stretch. That um, you know personally. Uh, I would prefer um, Blake Henson to maybe have uh, at least like the Seattle game under his belt before rolling into it. Um, but yeah. nevertheless, they're here, and uh, it's going to be kind of a defining stretch. So, what do you, what do you expect? What do you think is? I mean, like, I, I, I don't know. Just tell me about what you think about those next four, those next four games. Memphis doesn't have Wiseman for this game, correct? So the ruling came down today that James Wiseman is suspended for 12 games and will be back in January. The next 12 games or any 12 games? The next 12 games. This is not a Mississippi State. Uh, these players definitely <laughs> didn't, didn't get caught up in academic fraud situation. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, dang. I actually did not realize. I mean, literally your four biggest non-conference games are the mm-hmm. next four. Yeah. Um, that is that is interesting. I, I'm with you. I kind of wish uh, – we we could have gotten the Seattle game or something for him, but uh, yeah, I mean, gosh, I mean, eyeballing it, I think you'd be happy going two and two. I guess uh, anything above yeah. that, I think you'd be disappointed with less than two and two. I'll say that. I don't yeah, think I like. Think so. I think so. I think like one and three would be a disappointment for sure. I think two and two, you you'd feel kind of meh, uh, but not sad. And then I think you know three and one, I think you'd be pretty stoked. So. I don't know. That's an interesting stretch, man. I, I have a hard time knowing exactly how that's going to play out. But y- yeah, that is it's crazy to have literally the, the four big non conference games all in a all in a row there. Yeah. Um <clears throat> yeah, and that's what that's what gets me there is um, you know, if we go two and two in this stretch, I think I think the fan base would probably look at that and be pretty frustrated. But um, but I think that's a good – I think two and two in that stretch is a good run, especially if – I mean, I think, you know, I, I don't think that Penn State and Butler are teams that really can compete with us athletically. Hmm. Um, Memphis Memphis obviously can, but they um, – they, their, their entire starting lineup is all freshmen, and I think you have to get down to, like, the seventh or eighth guy that's getting minutes to get to anyone who's not a freshman. So, so that's a, um, that's a crazy, that's a crazy situation for them. But then you, um, um, and then you look at, you know, if, if we end up getting Syracuse or, um, if we're getting Syracuse or Penn State in that tournament, then, um, then that, that also, I think those also are games that you can win. But I mean, Oklahoma State is one of those teams that's always just really, really good. And Mm -hmm. I, I would certainly expect them because Syracuse is not, um, Syracuse is not what Syracuse used to be, um, yeah. So I'm not as I'm not as concerned with that one if we end up with them. But it's it's going to be. I mean, it's it's going to be a really interesting four game stretch. And I think that I think that you know, like I'm I'm with you. I think that if you go two and two in those, then um, then that then that's a then that's a you know a fine showing. If you go three and one, um, you know, you're ecstatic. If you go four and zero, oh, then just go ahead and book your tickets to the Sweet Sixteen. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> That may be a little extreme, but I, you know, um, but it's one, it's 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 one of the, it's one of those things that people people tend to look at it at, like it's football. Where if, like if you lose a football game, 
season's over, everything's done, it's ruined, it's the uh. worst. This guy's falling fire the coaches and stuff. Like we we might I mean, we may very well I don't think it's gonna happen, but we may very well go zero and four in these four games and still be okay because you'll you'll have a lot of opportunities in the SEC and you will um you know you're gonna grow and get more experience and 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 develop and those kinds of things. But but I, I think I think two and two. I mean, I, look, I th- I think I've thought all along that even even if Memphis has James Wiseman, we're going to beat them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be a good game. It's going to be um, you know probably really close. But I don't I don't know that I don't know that these um, these Memphis guys are really prepared for the defense that's going to get thrown at them. Um, they're all you know offensive wizards. That's true. But again. We're going to guard. We're going to guard really well, and uh, I think I think we're going to give them a lot of trouble, and uh, and eventually and eventually beat them. But you know, mm. we'll see. It's going to be an interesting draft. I'm I'm I am, I'm pumped about Saturday. I mean, it, it's been a while. It feels like it's been a while since we've played a really really huge um, November non conference game like this. Yeah, and so uh, so it's going to be really exciting. I think to see what happens. Yeah. Um. So. One more question, and then just kind of like a, a general. Well, yeah. So um, here's so th- this this is the thing that's interesting. the The SEC coming into the year was uh, really being talked up as um, as one of the predominant basketball conferences, mm. and the first couple of weeks of the season have not gone that way. <laughs> um, you know, Alabama's got a couple of losses that are probably bad losses. You know, Kentucky lost to Evansville, but Kentucky's going to be fine. Um, um, uh, South Carolina dropped a bad one uh, last night. Do you feel like some of the luster of the league is getting is getting knocked off a little bit? Man, that's an interesting question. You know, I, I mean, on one hand – there's definitely, you know, some, some losses across the conference that can definitely be, you know, you can use to make a case for that argument. I will say, I mean, I think like we've talked about this before, but the, the thing about basketball being that it is only five people on the floor at a given time, I do think that the, the talent differential um, between most teams is smaller in basketball than, than football mm-hmm. in some ways. And one guy going off can make, a game that normally wouldn't be competitive, competitive in college basketball, which can't be necessarily said in football all the time. So, you know, like, I mean, there were years where we were really, really good and, and still lost some unconvincing, you know, or, or some kind of bad look non-conference games. And so uh, I don't think there's enough to necessarily, like, uh, kill the hype train altogether. But, I mean, you're right. It, it, there are definitely some losses across the conference that don't uh, – you know, don't look good. I'll say that. Much. Yeah. Well, and, and at the same time, not all losses are created equally. I mean, I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, Kentucky losing to Evansville is going to mean absolutely nothing. Um, it was yeah. a great, great moment for Evansville. Uh, fun early season college basketball moment, but not, not a big deal at all. But when mm-hmm. you look at, when you look at, you know, Florida's got two losses now. I think, uh, which is which is very surprising. Uh, you look at, um, you look at. These Alabama losses, you know, Alabama was a team that I think was picked, um, you know, top six or seven in the SEC. Yeah. And some of that is Javon Kennelly not getting uh, – not 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 getting immediate eligibility. But, um, it, it yeah, it, it, it ends up being a, a really weird thing that, um, you know, I, I don't know. We got to see how it plays out. But, but – and then, and then also, I mean, especially if you consider a team like, like South Carolina who – it's kind of always in that bubble conversation and they're starting mm-hmm. to kind of, you know, they, they, they take some losses early that again, just, it's just really, really bad. Um, yeah. Really not great. So anyway, that's definitely something to keep an eye on. Um, but um, yeah, so I guess, I guess to close it out, um, we didn't really talk much. Um, we haven't really talked much recruiting and much off season stuff, but mm-hmm. um, the, uh, the, the, um, the signing class that we just brought in uh, was super exciting. Again, we're kind of seeing the fruits of that. Some the the player that I'm the most excited about, though, is is probably still Sean Robinson, um, and he's you know he's sitting down there at the end of the bench, red shirting this year, um, getting bigger, getting stronger, and uh, I, I'm just I'm just 
over the moon for this guy. And then, uh, and then you look at the news that came out, um, you know, last week that Matthew Morell uh, signed with yes. Miss, the highest rated prospect, um, the highest rated prospect since Reggie Buckner. But I think Reggie Buckner was even kind of before uh, rivals really started uh, recruiting, ranking basketball players the way they do. And so, um, mm. so really, the, realistically, the highest ranked player um, in Ole Miss history, and also has got to sway with guys like. Um, Kennedy Chandler, hopefully a uh, five star to get them um, to get them to come to Ole Miss. So, I mean, general general overall thoughts of direction of the program. Go. Uh, so important side note before I say that you said Reggie Buckner. It reminded me of one of my favorite things you've ever said, which was we were watching. I think it was the Wisconsin game in 2013. Yeah, uh, you came over to my house and we watched it. And you said, why does Reggie Buckner always look like he just smelled something bad? (laughs) (laughs) And I looked at him, and I thought that that was the funniest thing I'd ever heard. Oh, Um, Reggie. Anyway, and now I'm missing the uh, the 2013 team a little bit. But anyway, uh, those guys were fun to watch. But uh, I I remember remember watching that game. We had like 20 people at y'all's house, and and it just wasn't like – we just weren't playing well. And then yeah. Marshall, Marshall hits a three in the second half. I think we're down like 15. Yeah. Marshall hits a three in the second half, and I'm like, it's over. We're going to win. <laughs> and we did. It was Incredible, awesome. Bro. Yeah, it was It was amazing, man. What a time. So, yeah, that was that's my that's a fond Reggie Buckner memory for me. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, I think um, – yeah, I mean, gosh, it's hard not to be excited about the program, man. I think, like, first off – I think it's worth saying the investment in the pavilion continues to pay off, you know, like the atmosphere is ridiculous, man. The, the season opener was a Friday night game and it, I mean, it, it was bigger than a lot of sec crowds I saw, you know, back in the tad pad days. And um, I mean, the atmosphere is there, man. It's, it's just awesome. And of course, Kermit has, has capitalized on that, but uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, Kermit, Brooding well, sipping the tea. Mm-hmm. You've got a bunch of great guys come in, and, and this team, I think, is going to be really dangerous. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that Ole Miss basketball, uh, as long as I've been following it, it's never been more exciting as far as I'm concerned. And like yeah. I said, I mean, Ole Miss, gosh, will people will support a winner. We've talked about this. Yeah. And, like, I think things are going to be insane because people are showing up for non-conference play in yeah. November, and that just didn't happen before. Yeah. No, I'm with you, man. I think the I think the direction of the program is um, is as exciting as we've seen for any any program at Ole Miss, maybe ever. Um, and, and yeah, and, and I th- I think when you when you couple that with um, just some of the frustration, the frustration with the school as a whole, with um, the uh, the fake chancellor who's not qualified for the job that he has and and scammed, <laughs> scammed his way into it. Um, talking about you, Glenn Boyce, if you're ever listening, (laughs) where is he? Um, yeah, I I don't, I don't know if he's anywhere. Um, he's just hiding. We, we, we don't know where he is. Um, I'm going to get, I think I'm going to get one of those, where is Glenn Boyce shirts that, uh, that (laughs) had made, made up. Um, I would like that, but, uh, there's a lot of frustration with the university. There's a lot of, I think just kind of apathy setting in with football and, and, and we'll like, like, we'll see, I mean, we'll see what happens with that. I mean, I, I think. Yeah, this is not a football podcast, so we'll see what happens with that. But um, we should start one. Uh, no, I'm good. Um, <laughs> I think I think that I think the thing is that almost people are so hungry for something to be proud of right now, and the the basketball team is fixing to give it to them. And yeah. the what what I, what I was what I was so struck by last year was not just being the team that made the tournament out of nowhere and, and not Terrence and not all that kind of stuff. But those, those late season games, I mean the atmosphere and I had to watch them on TV and I was so miserable. I wanted to see them in person, but um, the, the, the Kentucky game and the Tennessee game, like primetime ESPN games, packed house, unbelievable games. Like those are the kinds of things that players see. And those are the kinds of things that honestly, like we know how basketball recruiting works. Those are the kinds of things that Nike sees. And they're like, all right, like we can get our kids on that platform at Ole Miss. And so you start to see guys like Matthew Morell get interested. You start to see guys like 
like Sean Robinson get interested? Who I think if I think if Sean Robinson had stayed in high school and played this year, um, he would have played himself into a class of recruit that we would not be able to get right now. Um, he, he, he would have been. He, I mean, yeah. he would have been in the same situation that that Jamin Brakefield was in. That um, mm. you know, he loved Ole Miss. He wanted to come to Ole Miss, but then Duke comes calling. And look, I love the Rebs. You love the Rebs. But if Coach K is like got you in Cameron Indoor, and he's like, hey, <laughs> sign right here. Like, I, I mean, I'm not saying that I would sign with Duke, but I am saying I'd have a hard time telling Coach K no. You know. <laughs> And so, and so, so we, we get Sean in the program. He's going to redshirt. He's going to bulk up, and he plays with Morell. Maybe, maybe we snag uh, another um, another twenty twenty recruit. Maybe we get a grad transfer, or whatever. But all of a sudden, the program is just is rolling. And that's what's so amazing is that it happened. It happened so quickly. Um, and, yeah. and again, it wasn't just. I mean, the NCAA tournament bid obviously, obviously accelerated the process. Maybe even, maybe even one of those things where like if kind of normal player development stuff happens this year and we miss the tournament, which again, I don't think it's going to happen, but you know, might, might kind of make Kermit a victim of his own success a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, yeah, you look at the, again, you just, you just look at them. You, you see them warming up, you see them playing games and they just look totally different. So um, um, from a physical standpoint, and then all of a sudden it just is going to get better and better and Kermit's going to get more and more of his guys. And who knows, man, but it's, yeah. but it's certainly it's certainly moving in the right direction. People are excited. You can now go to the pavilion and drink yourself a cold beer, which, um, hey. you know, it, it, that's what being American is all about. Um, so, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's exciting. So, yeah. all right, well, two games coming up between now and next um, – and next, and in fact, next Wednesday there will be a game. So, maybe maybe we talk after the game or different time or whatever. But – um, give me uh, give me your thoughts and predictions for Ole Miss versus Memphis and then Ole Miss versus Penn State because those games will have been played by the next time we talk. I know nothing about Penn State, um, so this is such a uh, off-the-cuff prediction. Mm-hmm. I have that feeling we split it one and one I think the wins against Memphis, and I'm basing that off of very little knowledge of Penn State. But, uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to make it through this tough stretch unscathed. I think we'll drop one, maybe two, but uh, yeah, I, I'm going to say one and one through that, but it'll be interesting. Like I said, I, I think my big question marks, like again, what's, what's Blake Henson's role. I'm excited to see what mm-hmm. his game looks like in year two. Um, how many minutes they're able to get him, you know, through this stretch and how he gels with, you know, this, this rotation. Um, and then, you know, I, we talked about this at the, the very beginning of it, but, I do think you're going to see uh, probably the first games where they do say to Brian Tyree, go out and get us 25. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I'm excited to see, uh, you know, it's, I think what we've seen is almost uh, the football equivalent of like running a very conservative offense against Southeast Louisiana. So mm-hmm. you can save the playbook. I think we've almost seen the basketball equivalent of that with Tyree and Schuler on offense to some degree. I mean, they're balling, but like, I think you're going to see a lot more uh, Bree and Tyree in the ne- these next few games. And I'm just pumped to to finally kind of see them give him the reins a little more on offense. I'm glad for the way they played it through four games, but he's going to explode at some point in the next week or yeah. two. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I, I think you're right about a lot of that, but I think that – I think that we're going 2-0. And, oh. and I think nice. that one, I think that one of these two games is going to be – um, Austin Crowley's breakout or Austin Crowley's b- breakout. And, uh, and then, um, I don't know. I think, I think C or, uh, I think C or Hunter has a, has a huge game coming as well. So, mm. um, I think, uh, December 7th, CSU Bakersfield, John McBride's breakout game, John McBride's b- breakout game, but Hey, a, a pretty cool game where, uh, where Rod Barnes, um, returns to Oxford. Yeah. So, that's uh, right. It'd be good to, good to see uh, Coach Barnes love and respect that man, and uh, kind good of a, kind of a cool thing. Um, totally. And seeing that, seeing Jarkel join his old teammates. Um, yeah, but I, uh, I forgot he was veteraning. I would like for him to have gotten the chance to square off. Yeah, yeah, that that, that would have been fun. He probably would have scored like sixty points on him, but uh, <laughs> might have given up fifty eight. But um, who cares? <laughs> um, anyway, all right, man. Well. We, uh, 
we have run out of things to talk about. Actually, we haven't, but we've been doing this for an hour, so at some stop. Um, <laughs> but uh, thank you to everyone who listened, and uh, we are certainly excited to be back talking about basketball. Um, excited about basketball. I think it's gonna be a really, really, uh, really, really fun season. And um, yeah, just glad to be back in the saddle. Stoked, the Pod Villain. It, it is here. Uh, Sam, where where can we find you on the the Twitters? The Twitter uh, just retweeted you a while ago, actually. You did. Uh, at Sam Mooney Music. I tweet a lot about uh, random things that I think are funny and random music things, and then hot takes about the rest. Yeah. Those are the three pillars at which my Twitter account is built. Those upon. are the only things Twitter should be used for. Um, <laughs> like, you know, you're not, yeah. I'm not I'm not going to say any more than that. Those are the only things. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and you can you can find me on Twitter at WC Rowan and uh, we are excited to be back and doing this and we'll talk to you next time. Hey.